Hello everyone, in this tutorial we will show you how to create and use shader function assets and how you can go from something like this to something like this. Shader functions are individual node networks that allow you to build reusable functions. Regardless of the complexity, they're a great way to reduce canvas clutter by packing complex networks into single nodes. They're also a great way to eliminate repetitive tasks. They have no additional processing costs, and once compiled, the code is treated as any other network created in your shader. They work by receiving input values directly from your shader, processing that information and outputting it back for further alterations or even direct use. They're quite flexible, you can add as many output and input nodes as necessary directly from the node browser. You can even copy and paste information between shader and shader functions. Shader function assets are not bound to any shader. You can use them multiple times throughout your project in the same shader, inside other shader functions, or even share them with other users. As an example, we're going to build a shader function that applies an emissive burning effect to your materials. Luckily, we won't need to build it from scratch, we already have that type of effect in our sample library. Let's start by creating the actual shader function asset. Simply go to Create, Shaders and select the Amplify Shader function. You can drag shader functions directly into your canvas or by selecting them from the node browser. All your shader functions will be listed here. Double-click a shader function to open it in the editor. The shader function canvas works just like your main shader editor. You can add any nodes required and you can even create material properties as you would with the standard shader editor. Data is received through the input nodes. By default, the shader function is created with a single output node, but you can add as many input or output nodes as necessary. You can duplicate them directly in the editor or select them from the node browser under functions. Deselect everything by clicking on the canvas so that we can adjust the shader function properties. You can add your own description here. This will be useful at a later stage, especially when working with multiple shader functions. You can adjust the order of your ports simply by dragging them into the desired location. Let's save our shader function and start adding its nodes. Before building a shader function, it's important to determine which networks can take advantage of this system. Repetitive tasks are usually a good place to start. The burning effect is a very good example. Instead of building it every time we need to add it to another shader, we can simply use the pre-built shader function. Let's examine the animated fire example. We can see that the fire effect is created by plugging a masked fire texture directly to the emission input. A simple scene node is used to create the pulsating glow, along with the panning effect controlled by a time node. The UV coordinate node allows us to simultaneously change the tiling and offset of all our texture samples. We want to take this network and turn it into a shader function. We could build it manually, but we can simply copy and paste the existing nodes into the shader function. Now that we have our nodes, we will need to make sure that they receive the required data. Since we want to use the UV coordinates node in our shader to control the tiling and offset, we will need to create an input port for the UV coordinates. Let's call it tiling control. Let's add a float for the fire intensity. Plug our outputs and, as an example, we can also change its name. Let's call it fire output emission. Hit save and let's go back to our shader. Let's remove the old nodes and add our shader function. Now that we have our shader function in place, all we need to do is connect the UV coordinates node, add a slider for the intensity value and connect the resulting effect into the emissive port. Hit save to update the shader. 
As you can see, the effect is now being generated by the code placed in the actual shader function. Let's recap what we built. We created a shader function that produces a burning effect. All it requires is the output of a UV coordinate node and a float node that controls its intensity. Data is received through the input nodes. It's processed and outputted through the output node. The shader function is self-contained. We can use it on any shader. Let's make our shader function even more flexible by giving users the option to change the fire and mask texture used. To do so, we first create two new input nodes, one for each texture. Let's name them and set them to Sampler 2D, the type that we want to receive via these nodes. Plug them into the respective text input of the texture samplers and hit save. Let's go back to our shader. Now all we need to do is plug our textures using a texture object node. Don't worry if you're not familiar with the texture object node. It's a simple reference to an actual texture that can be sampled by several texture sampler nodes by simply connecting them to the text input. We should have a working effect after adding the textures. We really look forward to see what you create with shader functions. Be sure to contribute today directly via our website. All submissions are fully credited.